stories in today's video. 1. I've been waiting 4 years to divorce cheating wife, but now she is dependent on me. Reddit update 2. Wife was refusing me for 1 year. Found out she cheated got STD. Reddit cheating stories updates. Wife and I are married with 2 kids. One son 19 years old and a daughter that is 18. About 4 years ago I discovered my wife had an affair with a mutual friend of ours. At the time everything in our marriage seemed to be going perfectly, we were happy, had a decent s asterisk x life nothing that would indicate any dissatisfaction. After I found out, I confronted her about it, she admitted to everything was apologetic. Turns out the affair went on for 4 months, and they broke it off a week before I found out about it. After finding out I couldn't look at my wife the same. I didn't want anything to do with her, if we didn't have children I would have divorced her on the spot. But, I love my kids and the idea of being a, part-time dad, and only seeing them every other weekend or some ridiculous arrangement like that I wasn't okay with. I told my wife, she can sleep with whomever she wants to sleep with because I honestly have no interest in ever sleeping with her again. Every time my wife tried to initiate s asterisk x, I'd just get feelings of disgust. Wife was apologetic for the rest of our marriage but I couldn't bring myself to it. We did go for marriage counseling but there was nothing to be learned from there. They tried to convince us that we needed to be intimate with each other again and that we could fix our marriage. I tried but I couldn't bring myself to it, just the idea of her being with our friend just drove me crazy I kept imagining the other guy. I couldn't do it. I told her that there is an expiration date on our marriage that as soon as our youngest daughter is off and away I am done with her. Days became a routine where I'd come home put a smile on for the kids, do my share of the chores and then go to bed. About a month ago, wife got into a car accident and now she has problems with her spine. She is restricted to a wheelchair. Looking at it, she probably will never be able to walk again. She needs me to carry her up the stairs and help her about with just about everything. I had plans on leaving her now I feel like if I leave my family will look at me as a monster for leaving his wife when she needs him the most. I don't know what to do I have been in a s asterisk x l e s s marriage for over 4 years with a person I have no feelings for. A person whom I look and just get feelings of betrayal and sadness. No one in my family knows of the affair, I didn't want to tarnish my wife's reputation. Even though she betrayed me she is still the mother to my two children and I didn't want them to think less of her. I posted on another subreddit, and it seems that everyone is encouraging me to talk to my kids about it hopefully incorporate my wife into that conversation as well. TLDR asterisk, wife cheated on me earlier in our relationship. I decided to stay with her for the sake of family and leave her when the kids graduate from high school. Wife is now dependent on me and can't leave. First of all I want to thank all of you guys for letting me share my story. Seriously, just typing this all up made me feel much better and your responses all were nice to see. So not much really happened I just wanted to share what happened I talked to my wife about our future. I told my wife, that I am still planning on getting a divorce after our daughter leaves. She starts trying to guilt trip me, telling me that I need to forgive her and work towards building our relationship. She tells me that for the past 4 years she has been trying and I haven't been receptive. I told her that she was also the one that destroyed it in the first place so she isn't really doing anything noble. I told her that I forgive her, but that doesn't make me love her again. I told her that the only reason I have any care for her is because she is the mother of my children. I told her that I'll make sure she is taken care of. Wife kept refusing telling me that we can make our marriage work, we can go to counseling again. I told her that my decision is final. We talked about talking to our kids about the infidelity. We won't go into details on who the other man was, but that they are old enough to understand why we are splitting up. Our son is coming back for Thanksgiving break and hopefully then we can discuss it together as a family. We also talked about future arrangements, we talked about selling the house. Wife didn't want to do that, but I told her that there is no point in having a big house if she is going to be the only one living it. She stated that this was our family's house and she doesn't want to give that up. We talked about physical therapy and what independence she might have in the future. I asked her if, underscore, 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 the guy she cheated on me with, would be interested in taking care of her. She got really mad at me yelled, and then we went to bed. I don't know just after reading the post and writing this I am in a good mood. There are some other things I didn't mention in the previous thread.
First of all I do have somewhat of a plan after I divorce my wife. There is this woman I met through my work, she works at a satellite office in the UK I plan on meeting with her soon after the divorce. I met her about 8 months ago or so. We don't share s asterisk shul conversations we just talk online mainly and I confide to her about my marriage. I don't know if we are going to form a relationship, she is much younger than me, doesn't have nearly any of the baggage I have, but she has been receptive when it comes to talking to me. So that's something I have to look forward to. Thanks again guys. I will probably post another update after Thanksgiving. TLDR, talk to my wife about leaving. She still wants to repair the marriage. I have no desire to do so. Wife and I, have been talking seriously about the divorce the past couple days. Oddly enough it was one of the first times after the affair where we were opening up to each other. I told her how I have been feeling about living where we are currently. I told her that after the affair everything around here feels gloomy. A big part that really hurt me when it came to the affair was how many of my friends were aware of the situation yet didn't bother to inform me. Right now when it comes to social events with other parents, I am distant and try not to stay for long. Wife sympathized with me, and she said moving away from here would be good for the both of us. I learned a good bit more about the affair, I am not going to get into all the details. But supposedly, the other guy told my wife that he wanted her to be faithful to him, so not to be intimate with me at the time. Also, I learned that the only reason that things ended was because he was planning on going on a cruise with his wife to work on their marriage. However, it didn't completely end because while we were going to marriage counseling, she slept with him twice. Wife wanted to tell me more about what happened, I told her that I already heard enough for now. In all honesty, I thought by now I'd become numb to my wife's actions but the pain still cut deep. We got onto the topic of accommodations for her. I asterisk assured her that I am not going to leave her until she is independent or until she has a support system to asterisk SSIST her. I asked her if she has any friends that would be open to asterisk assisting her time to time. She said she didn't know anyone. I asterisk assured her that at the very least, I will stay by her side until she is done with her physical therapy. From the last time she saw the doctor, it is expected that by the end of the year she should be able to return to work. There is no chance of her ever being able to walk but the goal now is to lessen her dependence on pain medication. The topic of how we are going to disclose the infidelity to our kids came up as well. We agreed that it would be best not to burden them and say we were miserable for four years, instead we will tell them it happened that we tried working things out, and it isn't the right course for us to stay together. So far things were good we were cordial with each other the whole way through. Yesterday we were coming home from her physical therapy. We were talking about housing plans after the divorce. I told her that I was planning on moving into an apartment, like the one we had prior to buying our house. We were talking about much work it is to maintain a big house and all. She asked me in detail as in where in particular I was planning on going. I told her that I have been looking into moving to the UK after things settle over here. She started asking, why would I want to move all the way there? It told her that if I could get a position there I'd make a good bit more money, and that I was serious when I said I wanted to get away from it all. I was looking at the road while I was talking to her. I look back, and I see her crying. I start asking what's wrong, she won't answer, she starts panting, and crying with greater intensity. We end up pulling up to the driveway. I still am trying to get a word from her. I stay in the car with her for a decent bit of time, eventually she asks me to take her home. I take her to our home, she is still softly crying. My daughter comes downstairs and asks what's going on. Then my wife blurts out, your father is divorcing me because I am a backstabbing wh asterisk re. I am trying to gain some control of the situation, I ask my daughter to leave so I can talk to her in private. My daughter refuses my request and she starts asking her mom for clarification. And my wife tells her that she cheated on me, and even goes as far to mention the other man's name. We were family friends with this guy, and his son goes to the same school as my daughter. Daughter starts calling her mom really nasty names. Soon after, my daughter starts confronting me about the divorce. I explain to her as honestly as I can, about why I stayed, the plans for eventually telling her. She didn't like my reasoning and told me she could have handled it when she was younger. I told her that after I discovered about the affair, her and her brother were the only people I had to look forward to. 
the idea of only being able to visit them on certain days would drive me crazy. We ended up embracing each other for a good bit. She told me that she loved me, and that mom is dead to me. I told her that her mom needs her right now and that no matter what she does she is still her mom. I told her that she should give her a hug and try to work things out with her. My daughter refused. We ended up talking later that day as well, I told her about my plans on moving to the UK after everything settles over here. She didn't want me to leave but I asterisk assured her that I'd still be coming back here plenty. Soon after talking to my daughter, I had a phone call from my son. He heard about every detail from his sister and now wants me to get him from school on Friday. He also asked many of the same questions his sister did, again I answered them the best I could. I asked him to please talk to his mother, he refused as well. It was late, I ended up making dinner. Wife skipped dinner. For a good bit of the evening I spent it next to my daughter. My daughter and son, both suggested that I should have divorced her on the spot. The whole time I was with my daughter, my wife was on her laptop. I tried talking to her earlier but I was shut down. It started to get late, I ended up taking my wife upstairs. She asked if she could lay in her spot. That's what we called, before the affair, it when she would rest her head on my chest, under my arm. We haven't done that or any type of cuddling after the affair. I agreed to it and she rolled over to me. She tells me she thought when I was talking about moving away, she thought to another city or a place that might be an hour away. She was under the asterisk assumption that she could still work on the relationship after we were divorced. I told her that we have had this argument too many times and it never ends any different. And right now I just want to go to sleep. I do my best to try to fall asleep but all I can hear is my wife's soft crying. Since then things have not been the same, my daughter doesn't even acknowledge her mother anymore. She has said some really nasty comments about her, for which I scolded her for. Wife is really distraught right now, I don't know what to do to make it better. This was not the way I wanted things to go down. Right now my wife has nobody, and I can see that she is suffering. I have been doing what I can to comfort her, I have been more affectionate and cuddling with her. But the last thing I want to do is to make her think I want to try to work on the marriage. I am going to be gone all of Friday to get my son from college. It's about a 12-hour drive there and back. And I don't know if my daughter will watch over her mom. I am really worried because right now she will purposely do and say things to hurt her. I don't know if this is her way of dealing with the trauma right now. I was talking to her, and within earshot of her mom she says, Do you think mom getting into the car accident was karma for cheating on you? Questions asterisk right now my wife is a shell of what she used to be. I have taken off and I am spending my time with her but I don't want her to get too attached either, so what can I do to balance this? Second how do I get my kids to stop hating her? Third, what can I do for future arrangements regarding my wife? Note asterisk, I understand this subreddit likes to recommend counseling, but I have been there before and it doesn't work for us. I have gone to different counselors and it gets to the point where their job is to make a marriage last no longer how broken it is. I will consider some type of family counseling, but my children all have hectic schedules. That being said, I would really like some advice from you guys, not advice telling me to seek advice from other people. Also telling me I am a saint for being nice to my wife doesn't really do anything. Update 1. Admitted to cheating on her trip. Says only once, evidence suggests at least N2. Update 2 to 3 confirmed in one trip. Digging in now. Update 3. Typical, it was a one-time thing. Responses, it was your fault. Responses. Confirmed at least three dudes during her last trip, likely systemic serial cheater since we've been together. Refuses to admit anything outside this business trip even though she had carbon copy behavior two years ago. Refuses to be honest. Claims she wasn't going to meet anyone on her current, solo, camping trip, I know otherwise. Keep catching her in lies. Filing papers meow. Update 4. It's at least 4 now. One on her first trip two years ago, hence the STD test then. Mutual friend knew about it, kept it secret. This is days, a week after we got engaged. TL. DR so secretly got tested for STDs the day she returned from a long business trip, is clean, but concealed the appointment and intentionally hid, deleted any evidence of testing. So has been disinterested in any s asterisk shul contact for two weeks since her return. 
I found out about the test but haven't spoken to her about it. What is the best way to broach the topic? Throw away for reasons. My wife is a great person and we have always gotten along. We have been married for almost two years and we've been together for four and a half years. We are in a monogamous relationship and have both had several partners prior to our relationship. Every year, my wife goes on a long business trip, typically about two months. During this time, communication over phone and email can be difficult, contingent upon the technological issues where she works. She really enjoys her work during the business trips and usually comes home feeling fulfilled and excited about life. Normally when she comes home, she takes a day or two to rest and overcome the jet lag, 28-hour travel time and 21-hour time difference. The following days, we tend spend lots of time together, s asterisk x, dates, cuddling, catching up etc. Because she's been gone so long. This year, she came home as her same excited self after having had a great trip. In fact, she seemed so excited, that she wanted to work on some projects, but would need to go get some material from the store. About three hours after picking her up from the airport, she says she wants to go shopping for her craft project and that she will likely spend several hours out shopping. She really emphasizes how much time she'll need to go shopping, many hours. I think this is a little weird considering that she just came back from a 28-hour flight, hasn't slept, and she's usually not the type to spend more than an hour or two shopping, but with E it's fine. About five hours later, she comes home with a single bag of craft material, I register this as strange, but don't really think about it. I chalk it up to taking a lot of time to pick out her materials, carefully selecting them instead of bulk buying. Over the next few days, she didn't really go through the jet lag phase and stayed distant. I thought that was weird but ended up giving her space and just focused on school. About two weeks post-return, we still haven't had s asterisk x, despite my advances and lightly prodding the issue, getting a, I'm just feeling off and don't feel like it. I find that strange, since she is usually a three to four times a week kind of person and we've been exploring some new k asterisk nks prior to her trip, which we had talked about kindling once she returned. The first few times that she doesn't reciprocate s asterisk xy time advances, I don't think anything of it. We've always had a very open, no, policy and are attentive to one another needs i.e., time, tired, not feeling it, need it now. After two weeks, the combination of her distance and no s asterisk x feels really, off. Over the weekend she went met up with her girlfriends for a day out. During that time, I snooped on her computer. If that bothers you, stop reading now. We have always been extremely open with our phones and social media, we both know our phone p asterisk s swords, computer p asterisk s swords, she knows my Facebook etc. While she was out with her friend, I looked on her computer. She left her work and personal email, Reddit, and Facebook open, logged in. So I looked, nothing out of the ordinary. I looked in the recycle bin and found that she had taken some self-nudes with her phone, sent them to her email, downloaded, then deleted them, hence the recycling bin. I thought that was odd, normally we would send nudes to each other, not put them on our computers, maybe she really liked them, she did look hot, and decided to keep them. This has my gears turning, because she has been really disinterested in s asterisk x since returning, but is taking selfies in the nude wearing lingerie. I looked at the metadata on the picture, confirmed it was taken recently and that it was downloaded from Gmail. I went and looked at her Gmail. Nothing terribly odd here, but anything before three days after returning home had been deleted from her inbox, then deleted from the trash folder, not archived e.g. If she came home on the first, everything before the fourth was deleted. However, in her trash bin, was a confirmation of appointment for a health clinic in an adjacent city. It had a link with a user ID to log in into the patient portal if you needed to change your appointment. I logged in with the ID in her common p asterisk s swords which I already knew from us sharing. The portal is mostly empty, but showed that she had scheduled and kept an appointment the same afternoon that she got home from her trip. The portal allows you to request records from visits, so I did. They were delivered to the portal about 30 minutes later. She had gone in for STD testing 5 hours after coming home from an 8-week business trip. To summarize, 1. Gets tested for STDs while saying she is going shopping the day she returns from an 8-week business trip. 2. Concealed the fact that she was tested, didn't leave phone number or address at clinic, careful to delete emails pertaining to the clinic, made cover excuse to go out. 3. 
super distant with me, very engaging towards friends, co-workers, no s asterisk x4. Says not interested in s asterisk x, but dresses up to take nudies, clearly masturbating, found lots of porn open on her computer, vibrator out, not anything odd, we watch porn together and alone, open about masturbation etc. 5. On a similar business trip, she did almost the exact same thing. Got tested as soon as she got home, seven week trip, refrained from s asterisk x for about a week, distant, I found out via similar ways, shared computer, saw email from health clinic about results on portal. Previously, when I asked her about it, she said she had a UTI and went in for a full STD panel. Totally plausible, I let it go. I just feel like there's a pattern here. Also said that STD test was normal for women during checkups, although most clinics say that you must ask for the test's reasonable suspicion. 6. No real reason to suspect cheating, but goddamn, this feels weird. All the elements of possibility are there I suppose. Possible explanations. 1. She had another health problem that seemed to resolve itself, maybe she wanted more follow-up and didn't want to belabor me with the details, although the other health issue isn't urogenital related. She didn't receive any tests that would aim to diagnose the concomitant issue. 2. Health information could be weird if someone reading over your shoulder sees an email in your personal inbox from a clinic, so you delete it. I'm not sure this explains why her inbox was cleaned, stuff deleted from the trash. 3. Maybe she feels a little detached from me after being away for so long and needs more time to warm back up? 4. Could have also had another UTI and got STD panel at the request of practitioner? Although, no antibiotics, treatments were administered during the visit, weren't documented 5. Maybe she thought I was cheating and got tested? Although, 8 weeks later seems a little outside of the incubation period. The secrecy of the whole thing really bothers me. Any ideas on how to approach this topic with my wife or other possible explanations? Okay, she's cheating. Before you confront her about it, and before you even decide how to handle the situation in any way, get your personal information and access changed to be yours again. Usernames, email addresses, all passwords, any paper doc asterisk mentation you have concerning your identity and finances need to be secured in a way she cannot access the information. This sounds like a pain in the asterisk SS, and preemptive. Trust me, it's not. The end of long-term relationships does crazy sh asterisk t to the human psyche. Spite has burned a lot of people to the ground in the past and it can happen to anyone. After that, decide what you are going to do beforehand and go through with it regardless of what she says. She is lying to you now, and it will only continue. On a personal note, I'm sorry this happened to you. It's an awful and betrayed feeling that burns at night and smolders all day. It will slowly p asterisk ss, but in the meantime you need to set yourself up for success in the future. Don't start tying your self-worth and self-image to what happened. Some people are shish asterisk tty, and are shish asterisk tty to good people who deserve the same love and respect they are shown. Take extra time to work out, further your education or enjoy hobbies, boredom will be an enemy of your mental state.